Now, anyone who's worked in CAD and specifically parametric CAD for any length of time has built, come across, trained, or otherwise seen a, a wrench set or a combination spanner set like this. It's a perfect example of parametric modeling, uh, how you can take a single part like this and with the judicious use of variables and parameters and in our case for on shape um, a configuration table it looks very very much like this uh, you can build the whole set of of wrenches uh, spanners very very easily here i've even configured the text um, for the size here if we have to really look at the the feature that uh, creates the text sketch um, and i edit that sketch i uh, edit the text you'll see that this whole section where we input the text that's going to be printed here uh, is actually coming from a configuration. You'll actually see it says unconfigure, which I don't want to do. Um, and it's that yellow kind of stippled box around it, which means it's a configured selection uh, or a configured item within this feature. It's kind of cool and um, allows me to uh, to easily change the, um, uh, the text in here. Uh, just based on which uh, configuration I choose. So obviously if I choose a size 14, uh, it's going to rebuild it to a size 14 and also uh, have the, the text in there. Um, one interesting thing to note, you probably saw this is uh, a font that looks quite new um, and that indeed is new uh, in the 165 release uh, that came out beginning of June or middle of June, sorry. This year, um, we added a whole bunch of new fonts. Actually, I can show you a, a couple of things there. Um, if I edit the text there, you'll see this is the my chroma. Uh, I really like this one. It's kind of a modern, uh, cool-looking sans-serif font. And but there's a ton of other ones. Look, uh, you know, this list is is extremely long now, and uh, lots of good things to to choose from uh, other than the the standard kind of ones you've ever seen before. All right, so that is that. And what, what I want to do with this is a, uh, a slightly different model. Um, I'm going to get this 18 mil wrench in and make a little assembly out of it. And what I'm going to do is put a nut, which actually has the same 18 mil across the flats. Um, it's a, uh, the appropriate size. It's actually come from a standard library. And it's an M12, which actually has the 18 millimeter across the flat. Looking at it in an exploded state, um, so we can unexplode that. So I've made this little assembly where I have fastened, uh, using one single mate here, a fasten between you know, the, the, the flat of the spanner and the flat of the, the nut. I've also then fixed, you can see here, this is, uh, the nut is actually fixed. Um, it's fixed with respect to this assembly uh, context that I'm in here. So I've got a fully rigid uh, assembly. And then I'm just adding a moment uh, using the force, um, uh, the load menu up here. So we're going to do a simulation of this spanner under the uh, influence of this moment that I'm going to start bending this thing around. And I'm going to pretend that the nut is entirely rigid. Um, that's what's going to happen. That's the implication for when I say something like this is fixed. Uh, the implication on the FEA is that this is a rigid boundary condition. Um, we tend not to need to use very specific um, esoteric and in some cases archaic terms, terminologies uh, for defining the setup in the simulation because we're using much more physical, much more realistic, and in fact, the things you already know how to use within Onshape um, to do this. So you see here in the assembly, it's just an assembly like you would have done it anyway. You fix something, which is always a good idea. You fasten something to it. Uh, and then on, uh, from then on, we just added a moment. Uh, we already have steel assigned to it as the, um, in the part studio. Uh, so the only thing left to do is simulate. Now, while it's simulating, uh, we get a chance to talk about um, how the thing is going to be. Actually, we don't have much of a chance because it's pretty quick. Uh, Onshape simulation is designed to be uh, what we would say it's interactive time. Um, 
it allows you to get results, uh, make decisions, understand implications of, of what you're doing uh, with respect to this design without having to wait for things to queue. You don't have to create a batch job and wait for uh, you know, your job to be queued up. Um, we're using the cloud native services as we always do with Onshape. Uh, there's nothing running on my computer here. In fact, this runs the same as if I was on my, my Linux workstation or my Mac, uh, MacBook Pro here or a Windows, it doesn't matter, or Chromebook um, because none of the sim simulation is being done uh, on the hardware that's in front of me. So we're looking at some deformations, we're looking at from some stresses here. Uh, I can move this uh, around a bit. Um, I can look at some things like displacements. You know, we're looking at a maximum displacement of around 0.6 millimeters. Uh, we have some other stress results. Uh, there's a sine meso stress that's actually a really interesting and useful one. Um, so it's a meso stress calculation, but the the positive stresses are in tension, and the negative stresses are uh, compression. So I'll just give you a little extra. Um, otherwise, if you just looked at normal Mises, you know, both of these sides, you would have to interpret that based on what you're seeing here as the top being in tension and the bottom being in compression. Just another handy thing uh, that we provide for you. Now, what's interesting, though, is what's happening at the boundaries here. Um, actually, if we explode this, you know, we can actually use the exploded state at the same time. Um, as looking at the simulation results. Pretty handy sometimes. Um, by doing this mate, uh, by, by creating this mate, we implied that there's a fully fixed condition uh, interaction between these two parts. And you'll be quick to point out then, but, but, but Greg, you only um, created the mate between the, the mate connector here and a mate connector here. Yes, that is true, but what the simulation is doing is interpreting wherever else these two parts or these two instances touch each other, uh, and I'll just take that and explode off. Um, wherever these things touch each other, that is where the interaction will apply, even though the mate is only applied in, in one place, uh, mate connector. It's pretty important to know that, um, and it's, it means it's a very, very powerful way because you can still get um, all of the implication from this single mate uh, whereas intuitively you know this thing is touching here on both sides um, therefore the fasten condition should be there now there is a in fact a way to override that or to help it uh, and that's with this optional checkbox here called the simulation connection and the simulation connection allows me to select individual faces um, that belong in the interaction uh, rather than all the ones that are in the touching uh, set. Uh, but I don't want to do that here. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to just let it use that default there. So that's one example and we can spice it up w one little level here. Um, in this case I've incorporated a standard content uh, you know, cap uh, socket head um, cap screw here and again what size is this this is an m12 as well okay so they're all m12s of course and i put an allen key in here to and i've fixed the allen key uh, you can see here again um, I've, I've just basically inserted it here i've got a fasten um, between the allen head um, the, the head of the bolt and the allen key i've got a fasten in there i've got to fasten the nut onto the bolt and I've used the same fastening between the nut and the wrench as before. Um, and this one's interesting because it just shows it's going to torque up and twist up the, uh, the bolt somewhat. A um, couple of seconds later, we can start to look at the results. Uh, even though this hasn't finished yet, we can get the results streaming back in. Um, the results themselves stream back in. All that's happening in my web browser is the triangles are being rendered in the appropriate colors. Uh, that's the way we can do things so fast. Um, but of course, you know, the better the GPU you have on your um, local machine, the better those triangles will be rendered. Uh, just worth remembering that. 
And there's all sorts of settings you can have a look at for uh, troubleshooting or optimizing the performance of your um, local works, uh, local workspace or your local um, uh, environment. So here, this one is now twisting the bolt. Uh, we can you know, mouse over and see some of the stresses in here, uh, maybe some of the higher stresses in the, in the root there, as we'd expect. Um, and again, this one is really, really simple to set up. It's just those three mates uh, that we defined before. This is not the only way you can set it up. In fact, you can choose some of the settings here. If I open up the simulation panel, we see that there's this connectivity method and visualization. Um, so this method I'm using is to use the mates. So it's only going to connect things as defined by the mates in the assembly. Um, the default is actually to use mates and touching faces. So if anything is touching, if I use this method, um, if I use this method here, it's going to uh, count anything that's touching as being fixed or, or whatever the mate is, um, in, if there's no mate there. Now, in this case, I already have a mate, so there'll be no difference. Uh, I could have left it like this. I could have gone back to the other one. But you would have noticed also that as soon as I changed this method, the simulation results started updating. It's resolving this uh, based on this new conditions here. Um, there's this very special setting here, which is not probably pretty uh, particularly interesting in this case, because we've just got three very simple, um, three very simple fasten mates. But if I show the connections, we'll actually render for you uh, in, in a nice way, color-coded as to the type of connection and which faces are participating in those connections. As you can see here, all of these are this dark gray, which means they're fastened. This is extremely useful to troubleshoot or to assure yourself that Onshape is interpreting the, um, the way that things are connected together in the same way that you indeed intend. So please do make sure that you check the method and maybe uh, get a preview of the connections themselves in there. Uh, one f I guess I did this one final time. I flipped the spanner around to use the ring end. Uh, and again, this is just the same as before. Um, I've got a 12 point spanner uh, ring end and you know on the six point nut. So that's the way that it would. Um, and again, I've just used a fasten and it has interpreted how all of these uh, would be um, interacting uh, for a fasten joint. So let's just give this a chance to update the, um, the stresses here. There we go. So just a quick example, um, some simulations that can be performed uh, very, very easily on little assemblies. This of course is by no means is, is trying to say this is the, uh, the limit or the extent of assembly simulation. Uh, this is just to explain how things get connected and the implications of mates in the assemblies and how the interpretation is made based on what your assembly setup is. Uh, I've got a ton more examples that I'll uh, endeavor to share and um, let's look for those in the future.